Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, when you think about media tech, you probably don't think about flagship processors. Well, that's all about to change. If you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So MediaTek as a company has traditionally and intentionally targeted a focus on the mid-range of the mobile uh, market, including tablets uh, and of course smartphones. And their range of processors is actually quite uh, wide. So at one end you might have some fairly low-end quad-core Cortex A53 processors with not very high clock speeds, a very mediocre GPU. But at the other end, what we might call the high end of the mid range, which sounds a bit strange, but maybe we'd like to call it premium mainstream. That at that end, they've got some really interesting processors. Of course, they can't compete with the flagship processors from Samsung and uh, Huawei, and of course from uh, Qualcomm. However, they are really good processors for what they are in that price range. Not everybody, of course, buys flagship devices. There are many, many millions of sales of smartphones that are in this mainstream segment. And there's lots of money to be made there. And MediaTek have done a very good job in that area. Now, that's all changing with the announcement of the uh, MediaTek Dimensity 1000. So Dimensity, kind of from the word dimension, maybe immensity, or I don't know, something like that. Dimensity 1000. Now it's got leading edge CPU, it's got leading edge GPU, it's got integrated 5G, it's got all of the lovely media stuff from MediaTek, because that's why they're called MediaTek. So it's looking like a really interesting uh, uh, processor. So let's uh, have a look. So when it comes to the CPU part of this processor, we're seeing some leading edge stuff here with four Cortex A77 cores clocked at 2.6 gigahertz and then four Cortex A55 cores clocked at two gigahertz. That's a similar kind of setup that we're seeing from Kirin, from Huawei, from Samsung, and probably what we're gonna see, we don't know yet, but what we're gonna see from uh, Qualcomm. So it's a four plus four, four big cores, four little cores running. 2.6 gigahertz is not as high as maybe some of the others, 2.7, 2.8, but are still a good speed uh, for those uh, high powered cores there. Now in comparison, before this, MediaTek have got what, the G90 with uh, two Cortex A75 cores and then six Cortex A55 cores, so a two plus six setup. So this is a four plus four, so really pushing into that uh, flagship uh, market. And the same can be said when we get to the GPU. Here we've got the leading GPU from ARM, the Mali G77 with nine cores. And to put that into context, Samsung's Exynos 990 has got 11 G77 cores. But of course, we don't know yet about the clock frequencies. You can run lower clock frequencies, more cores, or you can have less cores and higher clock frequencies. We'll see when we come to do the actual testing of these devices, but it's looking like a very powerful uh, GPU. And before we get on to 5G and the media stuff, it's also worth mentioning this is built on a seven nanometer process, which just about everybody else is building on. So that's what we'd expect. It's also got a neural processing unit. They're calling it an APU, an AI processing unit to make it different from all the other uh, neural processing units from all the other companies, We've got neural engines and NPUs. And so this is an APU, an AI processing unit. And it itself has got multiple cores in there for different types of AI tasks. So that's quite an interesting development there by MediaTek. And it supports up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, LPDDR4X, which is the faster version of LPDDR4. However, not LPDDR5. Uh, which we are, are thinking is coming pretty soon uh, from other uh, manufacturers. And then of course there is the integrated 5G modem, and by integrated that means it's inside the processor itself, not external, and external doesn't mean it's kind of a separate thing you plug in by USB, external as in on the motherboard next to the processor, this is actually part of the processor, and it supports standalone, non-standalone, it's got carrier aggregation, it's got lots and lots of lovely things, they're claiming it's the fastest, so on and so on. One thing that is interesting that's missing is it doesn't have millimeter wave uh, built into it, but then again, neither does the Exynos 980, with its integrated modem have millimeter wave, and neither does the offering from Huawei. So actually millimeter wave integrated is not yet something we're seeing very much across the board. 
It's also a multi-mode modem, of course, it means it supports 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G. And Huawei say we're going to see this in Europe and the USA in the second half of 2020 in devices, which means that it must be able to support the bands LT uh, 4 4G LTE bands that are needed in Europe and in the USA. There's no details on that yet, but the initial offering is going to be in China with probably the bands that they're going to need there for 4G and for 5G. And if you're looking for phones, probably going to be Oppo, Vivo, companies like that that are going to release phones with this MediaTek device in it uh, early uh, next year. And when we talk about media, it's got a five core image signal processor, which means it's Lots of power for taking images from the from the cameras and then processing those bokeh effects and all that kind of stuff you might want to do in terms of post processing available in the ISP noise reduction anti aliasing all that kind of stuff it supports uh, 4K at 60 frames a second for H.264 and H.265 it supports quad HD plus displays at 90 Hertz so lots of good things to tick off here in terms of what this supports for high-end devices for flagship devices so looking good Two other quick things worth mentioning, supports Wi-Fi 6, and it also supports Bluetooth 5.1. Well, that's not that interesting in itself, but it also supports, according to a slide that they had up at the presentation, Bluetooth Low Energy Audio, BLE Audio. Now, BLE Audio isn't yet a thing. It's not actually official. However, they're saying it supports it. Now, when I spoke to the Bluetooth people at CES, uh, in January 2019, they told me very clearly that Bluetooth low energy audio, BLE audio is coming. So this will be replacing the classic Bluetooth audio that we use for our headphones and for all the things, uh, Bluetooth speakers and so on. And of course it will be using low energy, which means it uses less battery power, so it's got greater range. We'll get into that when it's announced. But what's interesting is that CES 2020, Bluetooth have made invitations to an event where they're going to launch a new audio standard. So it's pretty clear that at CES 2020, there's gonna be an announcement for Bluetooth low energy audio, BLE audio, and actually MediaTek are ready to support that when it's officially announced with this hardware, of course, in combination with software. Now, that's my assumptions. None of that's official. That's what I've worked out. It'll be interesting to see when we uh, have the Bluetooth announcement uh, in, at CES 2020. Okay, so that's about it. So what we've got, we've got a leading edge CPU, leading edge GPU, leading edge uh, APU, AI processing unit, good stuff in terms of ISP, image signal processing, and all the media stuff, H.264, H.265 at 4K, 60 frames a second, support for Quad HD plus 90 hertz displays, lots of good stuff. So this really is positioning this chip up there with Kirin, Exynos, Qualcomm, okay, and now the one from MediaTek. So it's gonna be interesting. Now, of course, we've got the Qualcomm Tech Summit coming up very, very soon, where we expect that Qualcomm will announce their processor, probably the Snapdragon 865 for uh, 2020. And then I'm gonna make a video comparing the new Snapdragon with the new MediaTek, with the new Kirin, with the uh, new uh, Exynos, and see how all those uh, fit together as we go into 2020. And also I'm gonna do a video where I compare the current 5G modems integrated and external that are available so we know what is going into 5G in 2020. 2019, 5G was like, hey, we're announcing it. 2020, we might start to see more of it. Of course, 2021, 2022, it'll probably come to where I live and, and, and where you live, but we need to so see what the playing field is like. So I'm gonna do a separate video on the 5G modems that are available across all of these processors. So if either of those things interest you, do make sure you hit the subscribe button and stick around here on the channel. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget, I'm launching a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address there, and you'll start to get my tech newsletter. Okay, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.